Hey everyone, it's Apex and I heard that some people were selling blood furnace on their DK, so I went ahead and gave it a shot myself and actually found a lot of things to be optimized. So I wanna share that with you. So I'm gonna show you pretty much the gymming, enchanting, gearing, all that, but I'm gonna put that more at the end. First off, I wanna show you a sped up run of me clearing from the first mob all the way to the first boss within blood furnace and i'll be mentioning all the kind of things to watch out for all right so when you walk into blood furnace make sure you have your frost presence on you get your buffs up you're well fed and then you pull the first pull it's pretty simple they don't run away these ones have a stun that they'll do but otherwise they don't hit that hard they're not that dangerous they just take a little while to kill because they have high armor so just put up your diseases spread them and then take them out once you have just one low on health, you can start pulling the next one. Now these pulls though are a lot more difficult. These are the ones I was talking about. They kind of act like the monks from Scarlet Monastery. If you remember back in the original Vanilla and you were power leveling SM, they were pretty deadly if you got a lot of them. So first you want to take out the Imp because that's the only ranged caster. So usually just death grip it in and then get your diseases up and then spread them. Kick the fireball if they do cast one because you'd rather have the full HP and be low because these two adepts can really chunk you quickly. And it's almost unpredictable the way they work. It seems like there's no ICD on their ability or something. So you wanna take the imp out quickly without getting fireballed, get them low. They do run away, so be very careful that you don't end up pulling multiple because this whole room is actually quite deadly. There's no rogues here. They're more on the stairs and higher. But if you start getting two full packs of adepts with imps, that's already really difficult. And if you somehow pull anything else, you're gonna die for sure. You're gonna have to run out if you can even get out. So keep that in mind. Once you clear this room though, you know, take out the two guarding the stairway. And these mobs are easy. Once again, these are the ones that just stun you. And then once they're getting a little low, you can start pulling them up the stairway. You might encounter another rogue or two, take them out along the way. You will want to kill rogues first as they don't run away. They hit very hard, but they're very squishy. And ideally you want to avoid getting the poison stacked up because the poison, if it gets a two, three, or even four stacks, You'll die very quickly and restore a potion will struggle to be able to keep that low, especially if you aggro like a second rogue. If you get two rogues on you and you already have the poisons on you, you're going to die very quickly because that alone will do unhealable damage. All right, so when you get to the top of the stairs and let's say you've already killed the guards that you first pulled at the bottom, there'll be two guards at the top and there will typically be one to two rogues walking around. You can easily take a rogue plus two of these guards. So just kill the rogue first because you do not want to get high poison stacks. If you manage to get two rogues, then you want to kill them very quickly and get the restorative potion rolling if you start getting poison stacks because anything over three is going to be very difficult to survive. And once you take all of this out, or if you're getting near killing the pack, pull the walking warlock pat with a death grip or just lost it after you've icy touched it or something or death coiled it. That way you can speed things up more. It's a very easy mob. You just want to prevent the corruption from getting on you because it's a long dot which can add a little more pressure to you versus just getting rid of a shadow bolt, which you can easily heal back up because the mob doesn't do much damage. And once again, this room is going to be filled with adepts and the imps. Same thing as the first room. You just pull the imp, take it out quickly, put your diseases on that, and then spread it to the other adepts. And then take out the adepts. And once you have one left, you can go ahead and pull the next pack. But typically, keep its health a little lower so you can spread the aids to the next one and you won't worry about randomly dying to like three adepts or them managing to run and pull when they get low on HP. So take out this room. No rogues to worry about in here. And you start walking down this next hallway. There's two guards, both melee. Very easy. One of them's just a shield stunning one again. The other one is new. It has a little knock up, which doesn't really matter to you because you're not a caster. And then it does have an ability where it does more damage and it attacks faster once it gets to a certain HP, which I think is about 50%. So it's kind of like an enrage. Very easy mobs. Then the next pull, same thing kill those you can even fight all four at once if you want but at least you can kill three at the same time depending on your level and this next room is a lot more dangerous here in the room before the first boss now this one is probably the most dangerous room in here in my opinion after you've killed the guards and it's just the open room there's basically three packs and then a stealth patrol and then a normal patrol you're going to want to probably pull the first pack take out the summoner first that's the only caster you can summon a lot of mobs so you can easily kill it and then just take out the two adepts which you know are a little bit dangerous so this pull is slightly more dangerous than like the imp double adept but overall not too bad take that out and then depending on where the pat is you're either going to pull the pat the pack on the right or the two guards on the left in my case i'm going to pull the two guards on the left and you just take these out very easy no problem maybe look for the rogue while you're killing them so you can hopefully kill that or pull the warlock pat while you're killing them 
And then once you got all of that taken care of, then you'll take out the other pack or the rogue if you manage to find it. But this next pack has two summoners. So this is the hardest pack in here in my opinion, or at least it has the highest potential to go awry. So kill the summoners first. You can start with the string lead on one or wait till it casts. Then take out the other one, spread your diseases. Use your Dancing Rune weapon and your Blade Piss Breath Trinket if you have it for sure. Use your kicks on the summons. When your health's really low, you're going to have to use it on the damage cast. So that's one thing to worry about. They're going to probably be popping a lot of cooldowns on this one in general. And then the rogue might pop out. And then all of a sudden the pull gets really dangerous. If you have the rogue and the summoners out, it gets pretty dicey. I would kind of play it by ear whether you're getting a lot of poison stacks. Take out the rogue. Or if the summoner is getting cast off and there's a lot of mobs already, kill the summoner. Because if there's a lot of mobs, you're going to die. So this is the most dangerous pack. Once you got this taken care of, now you're in the final room before the first boss. Overall, the packs in here are pretty easy. There's no rogues in here whatsoever. Just pull the pats whenever they come around with death grip or whatnot. The pulls, for the most part, are all pretty easy. The techs are more dangerous. And the warlocks do hit hard. But... You can mind freeze their long casts and you can line of sight them as well. So you can kind of mitigate it like that. So pretty much you're going to be just taking out all the packs in this room. And if you really want to get the gloves, go ahead and solo the first boss. He's very easy. Nothing really to worry about. But keep in mind the XP from killing him is very low. It's not worth it at all. If you're just trying to min-max XP, just give the first boss either hearth or run out. Or do the dungeon reset if you have another account up or another player. And... One more thing to keep in mind with this room. And in this final room, the techs will be putting down this sort of white shaped landmine on the ground that will arm after a few seconds. If you run over this, it'll hit you very hard. So if you're getting hit by that, plus dynamite, plus maybe a shadow bolt or something, you can suddenly get dropped. So be careful of that. Also, there are some summoners in this room. Once again, just kick them, maybe death grip to interrupt. You have string lay, a lot of things that will help you. And this room's not too bad. Just kill the techs and the warlocks first. Or line of sight the warlocks. And another thing to keep in mind, which I forgot to mention with the rogues. You can also trinket them if you're alliance their kidney shots. And then you can icebound fortitude before you get kidney shotted for all DKs. So if you're in a really dangerous pull, you can just icebound pretty early into fighting them. And you won't have to worry about a kidney while you're trying to take them out before they stack up their dot. Okay, so just to show you that you can do this pretty much with no gold whatsoever because i'm trying to keep in mind maybe you're rolling this dk on a new server or maybe you're swapping factions i just swap factions myself so i'm pretty much just using the dk starting gear and no enchants no anything and i got the dk starting helm the neck then i have these shoulders which actually dropped off the last boss in blood burnus they are leather but they're statted amazingly and they have hit so these are amazing if you can get them i would highly recommend using them and then just the dk starting cape chest and bracers and then I got this mace off of the auction house. It's only like 30 gold when I got it. It's actually slightly better than the Blade of Misfortune or about equal to it. And that on my server is going about 500 gold. Now it's about 250-ish. So if you have no gold at all, this is a great alternative. And it doesn't have to be this one. It could be like an axe or a banded sword or just something that has randomized stats. Or maybe you get lucky, you get the Hell Reaver off of the last boss in Ramparts. Easy to run that while you're just hitting 60 maybe. You just got the Outlands. I said the DK starting Sigil. Then going to the trinkets, this one I'd highly recommend. It's called the Blade Fist Breath. This one is from a quest just a little north of Thralmar. You kill this mob, he drops in the quest item, and then you eventually go kill this 63 boss in the northern portion of Hellfire. And you need about two or three people around your level to take it out, but you use this trinket all the way to 70. It's very good. So I'd highly recommend getting this, and it syncs up perfectly with your Dancing Rune weapon. Both are a 90 second cooldown, and you can also use them just alternatively, where you pop the trinket and then you use the dancing room weapon on the next one and then you just start alternating them and you have a higher dps throughput throughout your dungeoning and the other trinket i got this one just off the auction house because i really needed a hit you don't want to be missing things if you're missing things you're just wasting your globals you might be dying you're low on hp you need to get a death strike in and then your runes aren't going off cooldown because they're still not used so this is an easy one to get it has this cool little glow because we gotta have a cool glow but if you don't want to get that or you don't have the gold or it's on your auction house, you can just use the DK starting one, the Signet of the Dark Brotherhood, which is the parry equip and then chance on parrying attack to gain 120 strength for 10 seconds. That one's also fine. And then DK starting zone rings. The hit one's a little better, so I'd replace the crit one if you manage to get something better. And then these boots are very easy to get. They're actually just from a quest on the west side of Hellfire. 
where you have to go and kill a couple elites, which you can solo, yay. And they're statted perfectly, very high stat weights as well. They're leather, I know, but they're still amazing. And then just DK pants, DK starting belt, which has hit, this one's very nice. And for the gloves, you can use the DK starting one or you can get this BOE. It's pretty much the same thing, just better stats, lower armor. But ideally, you get the gloves that drop off the first boss here in Blood Prince, which you can easily solo even at level 60. And they're called the Iron Blade Gauntlets. Even without sockets, they're pretty much your best gloves for a while. That's what I'd be running. You can also go even further later on. The second boss doesn't drop anything, but the last boss drops a decent axe, 70 DPS. And it basically has 40 strength and 37 stamina. So that's an option if you manage to get in a group and you want to do it because you're not high enough level. But eventually you get high enough level, you can just go solo and get that axe. Okay, so I'm going to go through the talents quickly with all of you. And this is just your initial one for level 60. And so I'm going to show you how you talent all the way up to 70 as well as some of the points in here as to why I'm not getting them. And then some of the main differences from some of the other builds I've seen going around the internet. So with this build, and this was right at level 60, so for instance, if you're 59, 58, you would just take a point out of here and then you would remove them from either or depending on what you want. So this is for level 60. The main things that we're not getting that some of the other builds have is Death Rune Mastery. People will put three points into here and this reads basically whenever you hit with Death Strike or Blur Rate, which is always Death Strike is blood, your Frost and Holy Runes will become Death Runes, which are usable for everything. However, you never want to be using your runes for anything other than death strike and getting your diseases up so this is actually totally worthless because you're turning your unholy and frost runes into death runes which you just use for unholy and frost runes anyway so this one's a waste of three points i don't know why anyone would get that and then we're going to be getting one point in the sin of blood this is the only flex one so you could swap this out you could get one point in here spell Deflection, you can even put it in the Mark of Blood. However, I think Mark of Blood is very poor because unless you're against a fast attacking enemy that can reliably land on you, so you're not parrying and whatnot, it's barely going to be healing you. And then it costs a rune and it is a frost rune. If it was blood, maybe you'd consider it, but it's a frost rune. Long cooldown, just not that great. And it's a global. You could also throw in point and improve blood presence or sudden doom because you can sometimes swap to blood presence once you have just, let's say, one mob remaining. Or you throw a point to Blood Gorged, or even like one point to Butchery. But really, I think this is the most optimal build. And then how I would point the talents till 70, you just get more avoidance. So first of all, you get 5% more dodge. You could even go first for the armor that comes from Toughness and Frost. But you really don't need to get Morbidity. This one gives you a shorter cooldown on Death and Decay. And some more damage during Death Coil. But you're not Death Coiling a ton. You still are, but this doesn't matter a ton. You really just need enough mitigation and damage to progress. This one gives you some hit on spells. I'm trying to get good hit for our melee abilities already, so you don't actually need this either. And then this is just some damage on Plague Strike and Scourge, but you don't have Scourge and you barely use Plague Strike, so not very good. And then Epidemic, you could put points into, but really, you're just refreshing things with Pestilence. So I would just go with this, just get more mitigation, but if you don't care you want to get a little more damage then you can swap up these points for a few other things like going for sudden doom so that is for the talents and then for the glyphs you only have two glyphs until you get the third which won't be for a while for instance this one glyph of rune tap people will read this and say oh it heals for another 10 percent of health it's actually 10 percent of the rune tap effect which means you're only going to get one percent more from the rune tap so this is awful. So I wouldn't use this one at all. It's kind of a trap. Death Strike, this one actually gives you quite a bit more damage. So I would just use this. As most of the time, you're prioritizing getting your, keeping your diseases up as well as Death Striking to stay alive and do your damage. And then Heart Strike. So this one's great for damage. And then the other one is Glyph of Disease. You can totally skip this one because you just have to swap targets when you reapply your diseases with your Pestilence. You don't have to constantly be refreshing on the main target because they're going to be dying anyway so it doesn't really matter so you can be you can be refreshing them by spreading them by targeting different targets but i still think it's really good because it, you can just use your blood rune to keep your diseases up and that's great and then for the minor glyphs doesn't matter much get blood tap it'll save you a little bit of hp when you get that move and then for the other one it doesn't matter a ton but you could just do raise dead so you summon your pet for free every now and then that doesn't really matter so that is the talents let me know what you guys think and thanks for watching.